I just left Pokai Bay for Hanalei Bay on Kauai. This trip will be about 100 miles overall and it will be overnight. It's my first one ever, but it should be fun. The wind is northeast 20, which is pretty mellow since it's almost downwind. And yeah, wind is pretty light right now because I'm in the lee of these mountains back there, but it should pick up soon and start going faster. Everything is going fine, but my wind vane popped out of gear like it was before. Um, I think I might find a place to anchor and sort this out because I don't want to do the channel crossing overnight without a working wind vane. You can see it's kind of just flaccid back there. Okay, I fixed the wind vane. I actually just had to tighten the actuator shaft, the little nut in the actuator shaft, and realized I can only pull it up using that blue rope on that side of the boat instead of that side. Because on that side it pulls it out of gear, this side it doesn't. But if I just follow that, it should be fine. So I'm now again headed to Kauai. The trip will be 100 miles and should be fun. It's not very much wind yet, so I'm just gonna motor sail until it picks up. I don't wanna get there too late, but I guess it doesn't really matter because I have all day tomorrow and all of tonight. So yeah, here's the start of my first overnight passage ever. After a few hours of sailing, I discovered that not only was the wind vane popping out here like I talked about earlier, but it also popped around the pulley, which made it impossible for it to steer to one side, causing me to fall off course. But I fixed the problem and the rest of the night went pretty well. It was an easy sail. Okay, I made it through the night, and I'm now maybe five hours from Hanalei Bay on Kauai. Quick recap, it was pretty light winds until maybe an hour off of Oahu and then it picked up to 20 to 25 and the waves were pretty big. I surfed at, I don't know, maybe, I think the highest I saw was 9, 10 knots, 9.7 or something. And yeah, the, the boom dipped in the water, which wasn't good, but nothing broke. Um, I tried sleeping some, but it didn't work too well because the boom was slapped around and Best Milky Way I've ever seen, best bioluminescence I've ever seen. It's a pretty good night. Yeah, it was fun. But it'll be good to be anchored. I've got 13 nautical miles left till I get to Hanalei Bay. It's a really frustrating sail because it's not windy enough to keep the boom from whacking like that. And then I've just been steering or holding on to this and pulling since like 2 a.m. But yeah, I'm getting there. sail from Oahu to Kauai it took me just over 15 hours and I anchored at Honolulu Bay. I averaged a speed of just over 6.5 knots or 7.5 miles an hour which is very good for a sailboat as small as mine. I spent a week at Honolulu Bay. The anchorage was a little bit more rolly than I had expected but it was beautiful and definitely worth it. And after that I pulled anchor at Honolulu Bay and sailed down the Nepali coast. left my anchorage at Hanalei Bay on the north side of Kauai and right now I'm headed to the Nepali coast on the west side of Kauai. Uh, the trip should be about 13 miles downwind though so it should be pretty easy. I'm gonna find a place to anchor, maybe spend a few days and then head back to a walk. Somewhere over there. If you want to get around there, I'm just gonna turn off the engine, get the wind vanes 
set, which is that thing back there. And I should be able to just sit along the ride and make it to the collie pretty easily because this guy's right there. My, uh, the wind catching thing for the uh, wind vane just fell off. Pretty bummed about that. Thing's $100 and I need it to get back home. I have a few smaller spares, but they're small. And I don't know if they'll work good enough. But, uh, there's no chance of going back and getting it. It's too dangerous. I don't want to try to risk falling off the boat, but I'm pretty bummed about that. That was a dumb mistake. I didn't tighten it quite as much this time because it was starting to ruin the bottom of the air vane. The air vane is the thing that mounts on top of the wind vane to steer the boat. Um, and I didn't have it tethered, which was obviously very stupid. Next time I'll tether it, but I gotta order a new one. I think the little wooden ones are too small, um, but yeah, whatever. The beginning of the trip was pretty miserable. I had a little bit too much sail out and the main sail was blocking the wind from the Genoa, which is the front sail. Uh, I took the Genoa in and I accidentally just, I didn't have enough hands to control everything and I turned around and jibed accidentally, which means the mainsail flipped directions, but it all worked out well because a little knot, the mainsail sheet, which is the sheet that pulls in the mainsail, knotted around that cleat and actually it saved me from the boom hitting the shrouds, which are the what hold the boom up, so, or the main mast up, so that would have been really bad, but I got lucky. These are some of the windiest conditions I've sailed in, but good news is I'm going downwind, so it pretty much feels like I'm sailing in no wind. I pretty much just hand steering this entire time, because I don't want to go downstairs in the cabin without the wind vane steering, because I'm not very good at, at steering the boat with just the sails yet, but yeah, I just do this for a couple more hours and then find somewhere to anchor around the corner. I, I can't anchor on the coast because it's just too windy, but around the corner it should be protected from the northeast wind. Great scenery here and the water is super clear. But what's funny is that I think if I would have just stayed inside by the mountains like this, the wind would have been blocked and I would have been motoring like this or sailing like this the entire way, which obviously is preferable to what I was doing. But I'm almost to the anchorage and I will be very glad to be stopped and swimming. Anchor is set. It's a little bit rolly, but the scenery makes up for it. I um, think I'll spend a while here. It's a good spot. second night at this anchorage on the west side of Kauai. I actually don't even know what it's called, but it's a good spot. Um, there's a really big south swell coming tomorrow, and then the day after, and then for a few days it's going to stay there. So I plan on um, heading out of here back to Hanalei Bay at around 2 or 3 a.m. tomorrow morning to try to beat the trade winds. Try to get out of here before the trade winds pick up, and hopefully I will be able to do that with no problems. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of sleep now. It's 10.30, I'm waking up at 2.45. Um, yeah. 
I've started my trip to Annalee. I've just been motoring for the past 10 minutes. Uh, so far, so good. But what's really gonna tell me how this trip's gonna be is when I get around this corner. If it's really windy, like I think it might be, then I'm in for a little bit of a rough ride. But if it's protected, like by the if it's protected by the mountains, then I should be good, which is possible. So I'm about six, seven miles away from Honolulu Bay now total. Um, so the trip is mostly done. The wind actually never picked up to any amount that's even considerable. So it's been flat calm this entire way. I've just been motoring. Everything's went better than expected. Um, I think once I get around this next corner up here, it's gonna get a little bit windier. That's what my friends, uh, Rob and AG are saying. They're up in that boat up there. But yeah, it's gone way better than I thought it would. The south swell ended up being the biggest to hit Hawaii in years, so it was definitely the right call to leave the Nepali coastline and head back to Hanalei Bay for protection. I made it into Hanalei Bay, now I'm looking for a place to anchor. Alright, I dropped the anchor in 30 feet of water, and I let 150 feet of chain and road out. Um, now I'm going to check the engine. I've been getting this weird goo stuff in the fuel filter. I can't figure out what it is. My dad can't figure out what it is, but I'm going to see how much accumulated this time. Well, quite a bit accumulated in the fuel filter. I have no idea what it is, but engine ran well. Old trusty Yanmar, 15 horsepower. I've been anchored here at Honolulu Bay for a few hours now, just relaxing and getting organized. Um, I'm gonna inflate the dinghy now, go to the beach, walk around a little bit, maybe get some food. All right, I got the dinghy inflated, motor mounted. I lost my little starter key, so I had to put the rope on, but it should work. Now it's time to change the salt water impeller for the engine. Uh, this is what pumps the, the salt water to the engine to cool it off. When the boat's running without this, it would overheat. So I'm gonna make sure it's good by replacing it. First thing I need to do is shut the seacock so water doesn't just flow into the boat. Now I gotta take off all these screws. I have this little bin down here just in case I drop any of them. I wouldn't want them to go into the bilge. Okay, well, there's the impeller in there. It's missing two of its blades, which isn't good, and they're not even in there. So uh, they're in the heat exchanger, I guess. I'll have to take that apart at some point, but yeah, I'll change this, and it's the best I can do for now. Okay. Now I'm gonna put this impeller lubricant on the impeller on the inside of the pump. Okay, I've got the new one in there. It's all lubed up. I think that's the right way. I hope it's the right way. Looks like it is in the instructions. Should be fine. I just gotta take this old O-ring out, uh, lube the new one, put it in, and put the cover back on. It should be good. I got the cover on. I just gotta tighten these screws. And I'm done. I've got a pretty decent forecast for going back to Oahu from Honolulu Bay on Kauai. It's east 20. Six foot swell, six foot wind waves, which isn't too bad for Hawaii. I'm just gonna give it a try. If it's too rough, I'll turn around and come back and wait for east or northeast 15, but yeah, we'll give it a go. 